Welcome to episode 46 of the Talking Fires podcast. I'm your host, Ben Fadden, uh, coming to you after the Oakland Athletics have beat the Padres in the second game of the series, split the series in Oakland, um, or excuse me, against Oakland. This was not a clean game by the Padres whatsoever. The Padres did win game one, so that was definitely a good silver lining, but it was not a good ending to this series at all. Uh, because of the momentum that they had going in. And then um, the second game here, the starting pitching, Blake Snell was terrible. The bullpen wasn't great. Um, so just kind of a deflating loss. I get that they split the series against probably a postseason team, but it was just deflating. Um, not a lot of energy coming out of this you know, episode right here because – you just kind of expected the Padres to play better uh, in the second game of the series, and they were no hit through five innings. They didn't have a base runner through five innings. So, again, just an uninspired, seemed like performance. Yeah, you could say they came up with, you know, a good inning um, in the series finale, right? In that ninth inning, they come up with four runs. Um, but the game was way, way out of hand already by then. So I'm not going to, you know, sing praises about that. Let's start with game one. Uh, Padres end up winning this one seven to four. This was a great win. Uh, Adam Frazier's Padre debut. It looked like everything was going well um, through this series. Obviously, you know, take game two. Uh, but I did want to focus on the positive here first in this game one. Uh, on Tuesday, Matt Strom worked a perfect inning in El Paso, rehabbing from that knee injury. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. He can, He's going to be, if he's healthy, he's going to be like a trade deadline addition, essentially, for the Padres' bullpen. So maybe you don't see Preller go and get a couple relievers because he knows Strom's healthy and coming back and is going to use that as one of the relievers. So it's one of those things um, that – it's a definitely a good bonus to have um, because the Padres bullpen has been taxed this year. Uh, but the offense stepped up here uh, before I get to Paddock. Obviously, Fernando Tatis Jr.'s home run, 440 feet, almost hit the Peco Park Jumbotron. By the way, the Peco Park sign on top of the Jumbotron, it's all white now. The Peco in Peco Park is not red. So uh, anyone that goes to Padre games, you're kind of like, feeling something's different that's I guess that's something that's different I saw on Twitter that it's not red anymore so that's that uh Tatis almost hit that jumbotron there his now that was his 31st home run of the year 440 feet a two-run blast uh definitely got the offense going it seemed kind of flat uh Tatis did leg a single into a double in his first at bat uh but with that said it there was nothing in the second inning out of Hosmer, Pham, and Grisham. Pham and Grisham struck out. And then in the third, they come up with two runs on the two-run homer. And then the fifth was their best offensive inning, obviously. Um, that's where it broke out. You had Jake Cronenworth with the bases loaded, I believe, uh, came up huge with the two-RBI single. And then Manny with the three-run homer to right field uh, definitely gave them the insurance that they needed. Um, uh, you know, this game, you wanted the offense to really, really, you know, get going here. You wanted it to play well in Adam Frazier's debut because frankly, this guy's an all-star coming through, you know, he's contact guy, another Jake Cronenworth in the lineup. And so if he, you know, can start the lineup, well, this is my thought process going into the game. If he can start, you know, get this lineup going, I think that's momentum. You have Tatis, Cronenworth, and Machado after him. Those are all all-star infielders. So that's a definitely a great, you know, top of the order to have. And they showed it in this game, Adam Frazier with two hits. Uh, Jake Cronenworth, I did want to touch on his two RBI single. Seems like whenever he's in a big spot, whether that's, you know, runners on, uh, runners in scoring position, bases loaded, seems like he always comes through. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to be like a grand slam like it was last year. Um, but he comes through, he's going to put, put, you know, a good uh, bat together. And that's all you really want out of Jake um, and any Padre for that matter. 
when the situation um, is that big with bases loaded and stuff like that, because you don't want to have like a Joey Gallo come here. Uh, there's reports on Twitter that he was scratched from the lineup, uh, non-medical reasons. So it looks like he's going to get traded. Uh, if that comes across, I'll definitely tell you. Uh, but back to the Potters offense, you don't want a Gallo type guy coming up there because that's not a good at bat. And it's probably going to end in an unproductive out. Uh, but Cronenworth has not been that. Adam Frazier hopefully continues to not be that. He went two for five, scored two runs in his debut, his first hit in a Potter uniform, an infield single. Guess what? He put the ball in play, made contact, and good things happened. Uh, I think a lot of Padres can, you know, learn a lesson from that. Chris Paddock, I did want to touch on him. He was pretty dang good. Uh, he had a rocky inning. I get that the Chris Paddock haters are going to, you know, say, oh, he gave up three earned runs uh, in that third inning. He couldn't, you know, get anyone out, it seemed like. Um, but, you know, other than that, he was great. He grinded through it. Um, oh, wow. Joey Gallo is being traded to the New York Yankees. So Padre fans like me can rejoice. They're not getting Gallo. Uh, wow. Gallo to the Yankees. Anyway, back to the Padres. Uh, he grinded, Paddock grinded through his start. You know, season high, 102 pitches, uh, six innings. Yeah, he gave up nine hits. That was, you know, part of that third inning. Some of them were unlucky, like the blooper over uh, into right field. Um, you know, but other than that, he grinds through it one walk. I like, you know, I'm big on uh, less walks, obviously. Uh, when you walk, guys, obviously those are free passes. Those guys could, you know, come and score. Um, you know, but Paddock is a guy that when he's not walking, guys, even if, you know, he's his command isn't great, if he's not walking, guys, Maybe that ends up being more hits, um, but here it wasn't. Uh, so he was attacking. I think, you know, that third inning got away from him, but he didn't have two bad innings. Um, so good start from Paddock. Sorry, I'm a little distracted here with Gallo going to the Yankees. My Twitter's getting just exploded with news. Um, that's an interesting acquisition for the Yankees. Um, Wow. Uh, I don't know if Aaron Judge is going to be included. He was scratched. He wasn't, it wasn't an injury situation or anything. He was scratched from the lineup against the Rays today. So that's something to definitely, uh, you know, pay attention to. Uh, Yankee fans seem happy that they got Joey Gallo. Um, what's new? Big guy that strikes out a lot. Yeah, he has power, but, well, he uh, strikes out. So, good for the Yankees. Um, wow. All right. This is a Padres podcast, though, so sorry for that. I was just – Joey Gallo's a star. He's a star player, and that's the biggest uh, news, you know, of this trade deadline season. Hopefully, Padres can make a move. Um, I'm glad that they didn't get Gallo because Gallo – strikes out a lot he's not a fit he's not an Adam Frazier he's the opposite of that and I think the Padres need more Adam Frazier's than guys that are closer to um, Gallo's you know skill set um, but moving on here so Paddock grind through the start uh, let's see Pagan Hill Pomerantz Melanson uh, came in after Paddock Pomerantz did give up one run on the homer, uh, but good pitching performance pretty much all around. Yes, Paddock had that one bad inning, but other than that, he was good. I keep saying he grinds through it, but I think that's a big thing for a starting pitcher. You don't want your bullpen to keep getting taxed like that, uh, like they did in the first half. So if he can continue pitching well um, then and grinding through starts, the bullpen is going to thank him for it. Uh, so Padres improved to 59 and 44 again after that uh, seven to four win with the Manny Homer being insurance Tatis 31st homer of the year Manny's homer by the way was his 18th home run of the year um, 
I did want to address one thing though. Uh, talking about Air Cosmer, uh, he kind of made some headlines with his answer that he gave to Jeff Sanders of the San Diego Union Tribune, his question about, um, he, Jeff Sanders pretty much asked Hosmer, would it be disappointing if he was traded from the Padres uh, knowing that he's been through some of the lows? And Hosmer responded saying that's a dumb question that Jeff is better than that. Um, now, people on Twitter, obviously Hosmer haters, you know, said that well, that's actually a valid question. Is it though? I get Jeff is trying to do his job. I tried getting him on the podcast. He respectfully declined. Um, Jeff, I, 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 I disagree. I don't think that was a, I think that was a dumb question. I think it was, ob it was an obvious answer. And what are questions? You know, by definition, a question is something that you ask for an answer. You don't know what the answer is, so you ask the question. In this situation, Jeff knew what the answer was going to be. He, you know, what is he going to say? You ask how would you be disappointed if you were traded from a World Series contender? Essentially what he asked. What do you think Hosmer's going to say? No, 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 no. I, I, I'd be happy if I was traded from a World Series contender from the team that I was like the first big, you know, signing uh, to, you know, get this ball rolling on the rebuild. No, I'd be happy. Please, please trade me to the rebuilding Texas Rangers, please. No, of course he's going to say, yes, I would be disappointed. So he doesn't have to answer that question. People can whine all they want about Hosmer if he was being sensitive or something. I, it was just an obvious question. Like, I hate those questions from the media. Like they're trying to do their job, but at the same time, like, come on, like, duh, he's obviously going to say, if he answered the question, he, you know what the answer was going to be. Yes. I would be disappointed if I was traded from a world series contender. Yes. So that's all there is to it. I think we can move on from that, but I just wanted to address that people on Twitter a lot of from what I saw was people who were saying that it was a good question. I kind of, I just disagree with that. It was an obvious question that I think just wanted to kind of like elicit a, res uh, a bad response, um, a response that would get some headline. And I, I guess it did on Twitter. So congratulations to Jeff, nothing against him, nothing. It could have been anyone. It could have been Kevin AC could have been Dennis Lynn, whatever, but, I just think it was just an obvious question. Marty Caswell, who we had on the podcast earlier this year on Twitter, she said that Hosmer been, had been asked that question like three times, maybe in different ways, but like three times he was asked it. So it's like, come on. Yes, he knows that he's in Twitter. He's in uh, trade rumors. Of course, he would be disappointed if he was traded from a World Series, World Series contender. So why do you have to ask? You know the answer. All right, move on. Again, Potters win the series opener 7-4. They lose the second game in the series, quick two-game series. They lose 10-4 to four to Oakland. Really, 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 really de deflating loss, in my opinion. Uh, yes, they're playing a playoff team, but you expected more out of, out of Blake Snell. He pitches better at home than he does on the road, and this seemed like a road start. Gives up seven earned runs. First inning could have gone, couldn't have gone any worse. Really bad. Uh, three walks, they end up all scoring. Gives up a three-run homer to Matt Chabon, who has sucked as of late um, with the bat. I think en entering the series, he's like four for 40 in his last uh, 40 at-bats, played appearance. So terrible. Matt Chabon's been terrible, and Matt Chabon took him deep. So Blake Snell did not have good location, gives up another run in the second. Um, and he just was... This was definitely something that the Padres did not want. They could not afford this. Blake Snow, he came in. I don't know how many times I have to say this. He came in into the year, high expectations, hasn't done, hasn't, you know, lived up to those expectations. Um, and he just can't find it. I, it's really, really frustrating. You see the talent. You see the electric fastball, you know, every now and then. And it's like, how can this dude not put it together? Stick with the game plan and go. 
it, you know, improve your command. I know he's trying to. It's just frustrating to sit and watch that. Um, just watch a guy that, that obviously has the talent, former Cy Young winner, hasn't he just hasn't done it in a Padre uniform. We have to like convince him that he's pitching in Florida every start for him to pitch well. He pitched great in Miami, uh, and he didn't do it today uh, against the against the A's and. There was no way the Padres were going to win this game because of how bad he pitched. So th- this kind of begs the question, who's more, who are you more confident in? If I was asking myself, who am I more confident in right now, Chris Paddock or Blake Snell, I would say Chris Paddock. Not just because of the back-to-back quality starts he's done, you know, five shutout innings against Atlanta in that game, one of the doubleheader uh, last week, and then giving up three runs but going six innings, 102 pitches, in route to a win last night. Uh, it's not just that. It's that, um, you know, he has just shown more. He's shown the ability to have command at times. I know it's went in and out, but he's shown more command than Snell has, in my opinion. Um, his fastball seems to have more life to it than Blake Snell does. Uh, he, he, it seems like he's getting that fastball up in the zone. And it seems like he's more confident most of the time on the mound than Blake Snell is. Blake Snell just seems lost on the mound at times. So how am I going to say that I'm more confident in Snell when he just hasn't shown it consistently? Would I be confident in putting him on the mound in a playoff game right now? I, I, don't, I don't think so. Paddock, I'd be more confident in. I still wouldn't be that confident. But I think that I'd be more confident in him than Snell. Um, Because Paddock, as of late, he's shown that he can keep the Padres at least in the game. You know, giving up three runs is completely fine, right? It's it's completely fine. Giving up seven is not. That's the difference really right now. And I think that this Snell start is going to make Preller definitely be like, wow, Okay, Snow's facing a playoff team and he gave up seven runs. This might happen in the postseason. This might happen when we need him to pitch better in September. So I think I need to go get another starter. I'm not saying Max Scherzer. I'm not even I'm not even like as welcoming to that idea as most Padre fans are. I love Max Scherzer. He's one of my favorite pitchers to watch. Root for the guy, have his autograph, but his contract, I know that he's not getting paid. You're not going to have to pay anything really um, now, uh, this year, but it is, you know, that you'd have to pay later down the road. And he's a free agent at the end of the year, a Boris client, and the rotation is clogged going into next year. So I just don't see that great of a fit. And, you know, there's talking about, I saw John Schaefer tweet, is Snell going to be on the roster next year as a starting pitcher? And it's like, yes, probably, because the Potters are going to want to fix him. And the Padres are going to want to not sell low um, on Snell. They'd be like like Gore. They'd be selling really, really low, and they don't want to do that. So I see Snell sticking around. But as for now, you got to be concerned. This guy just hasn't been consistent. He doesn't look confident on the mound, and so it's 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 frustrating because it's frustrating more than anything because we saw it in 2020. It's not like we saw it last in 2018 and Snell sucked the rest of the time. No, we saw it in the World Series on the biggest stage against the most talented lineup in the league. We saw him dominate. We've seen it this year. We saw him dominate the Dodgers, uh, I think, at Peco Park earlier this year uh, when they swept them. So it's there. He just hasn't done it consistently, and it sucks to watch because you know it's there. So more confident in Paddock more confident in Weathers than I am in Snell. I know, I mean, if Lamette gets back, I'd probably be more confident in him, you know, assuming that he's healthy. So that's where the rotation stands. I think that the Padres need to go get another back-end starter just to provide innings um, and maybe give Snell some time off if he needs it because he's, it just seems like he's lost right now. Um, Padres lose this one 10 to four. Shamanaya was great, not going to take anything away from him. So I'm not going to, you know, harp on the offense there. But I kind of will harp on the strikeouts. Uh, you know, one, two strikeouts in the first inning.
strikeout in the second, strikeout, two strikeouts in the third, two strikeouts in the fourth, two strikeouts in the fifth, um, strikeout in the seventh, strikeout in the eighth, strikeout in the ninth. If you strike out that much, I'm sorry, I just don't think that you're going to win very many games. You might win games with the home run ball, the long ball, but you're not going to give yourself a chance to uh, have a lot of base runners and increase your chances of, you know, uh, scoring runs with runners in scoring position because guys are striking out and striking out doesn't help the team at all because you're not putting the ball in play. You're not even giving yourself a chance to get on base and potentially go around and score. So I think strikeouts have to go down. Again, props to Sean Manaya, though, so I'm not going to harp on the offense too much. We know that the offense is talented. We saw it the night before. We saw it yesterday when they scored seven runs on the A's and won seven to four, when Tatis hit a two-run homer, when Machado hit a three-run homer, when Cronenworth had great at-bat, uh, giving the Potters the lead four to three there, when Frazier had great at-bats, obviously putting the ball in play, two hits, legs out an infield single. So we saw it last night, but it wasn't there today. And so hopefully that changes, and it needs to change as we move into uh, this Colorado series. Padres are now 59 and 45. They obviously can't gain any games on the Giants in the division because they lost. And now they're playing a Rocky team that may or may not have Trevor Story by the time the series starts tomorrow um, or the remainder of the series uh, after tomorrow night's game. Uh, again, four game series against Colorado. Colorado entering Wednesday was 19 and a half games back in the National League West at 44 and 57. They are terrible this year, but they have the Padres number, and that sucks because the Padres should be, you know, stacking together wins right now um, because they're playing lesser opponents. They should be stacking together wins against teams like the Rockies, who they lost the series to going into the All-Star break and were swept to, you know, capping off that uh, bad stretch of losing like 13 of their last 17 games at one point this year on that one in five road trip to Queens, and then to Denver. Um, they need to win these games, simple as that, because if the Dodgers win these games, the, Do the uh, Giants win these games, well, that's them padding their win total, and the Padres not. So they need to win this series. They need to take three out of four. I think splitting games are getting a little dangerous because, again, as each game goes by, later and later into the season, less time you have to make up ground. They will have plenty of time to make up ground, though, you know, with that said. Uh, but you'd hate for to, you know, lose the wild card home field advantage by a couple games, and you look back and it's like, oh, we got swept by the Rockies that one series. We lost the series going into the All-Star break. We split, you know, let's say they split. Oh, we split instead of taking three out of four or sweeping, um, you know, in July, late July before the deadline, after we got an All-Star in our lineup. You'd hate to look back on that and say, oh, wow should have done this you know so they have to win this series um uh, because again these are teams you should beat you should beat the Diamondbacks. you should beat the rockies uh, i thought they would have had a good a chance to beat the the sweep the a's here in this two game series but that didn't happen the snell really sucked um and the offense got dominated by sean manaya manaya manaya's pitched well this year so i'm not i'm not gonna Again, I don't want to harp on the offense struggling too much because they were facing a good pitcher, and great teams can have off nights sometimes, off days. So there's that. So that's really the episode. Again, Joey Gallo, sorry if I don't have a bunch of energy right now. The pod, That was a deflating loss, in my opinion. Blake Snell, that's a big question mark in the rotation. If he can give him innings, if he can you know, keep get the Padres in games, uh, the Giants are well-positioned out of bat, and sources say they remain uh, in contact with teams about Chris Bryant, uh, the Cubs, and Trevor Story. That's John Morosi reporting that of MLB Network. So, again, Story may or may not be with the pod against uh, with the Rockies going up against the Padres tomorrow. We'll see how that situation plays out. Joey Gallo, sorry if I uh, wasn't, you know, too, like, locked into the screen here because I – my Twitter is blowing up about Joey Gallo being traded to the Yankees and all Potters fans, except like me, Jacob, and some other guys, they like wanted Gallo still. And every time Gallo in a home run, people would post pictures of Preller on his phone. Um, he finally goes to the Yankees. Thank God. Uh, because 
I don't think he really makes the Padres that much better. I think he's just – he's like Hosmer. He's another hole um, most of the time. Hosmer's pitched – you know, he's done well in clutch situations most of the time, but he strikes out, grounds out a lot. So I'm, I'm good with Adam Frazier over Joey Gallo any day of the week and twice on Sunday. So that's the episode, episode 46. Uh, we'll be with you probably sometime on Friday about the trade deadline, what the Padres did, what they didn't do. Uh, but other than that, I know it was a short episode. Jacob's not here, so there's not a, a lot of questions or reaction You know, we can go back and forth on. Joey Gallo traded to the Yankees. Eduardo Escobar from the Diamondbacks to the Brewers today. Padres uh, probably should be making some starting pitching moves um, and maybe another reliever or something like that. So Ben Fadden here, Talking Friars. Until next time, let's go Padres.